Hi guys. Uh, so in this session, I'll be just discussing about the, some of the basic concepts related to our genetic material, which forms the basis of our inheritance. Uh, what is the reason behind the inheritance? Now, as we know, um, within the human beings itself, we can see a, a wide variation. That is, some are very dark, some are fair, some have curly hair, some have straight hair. Like this, the features are very different. We, we find a wide variety of features in, in human beings. And similarly, some of these traits get transmitted to their, uh, their uh, offsprings and some do not. But uh, what is the reason behind this inheritance? Uh, why should some, uh, some characteristics get transmitted from parent to the offspring? The reason behind inheritance is a unique genetic material present in each individual. So the unique genetic material is responsible for the respective characteristics of each individual. That is, the genetic material decides whether he is dark, whether he is fair, whether he is intelligent, whether he is dull, or whether he is active, etc. And similarly, this genetic material gets transmitted uh, during uh, the sexual reproduction and the offspring also inherits some of the characteristics from the parent. So the entire reason behind the inheritance of uh, characteristics is lies uh, within the genetic, uh, genetic material, unique genetic material. Now what are the types of genetic material? Basically there are two fundamental types, uh, two types of genetic material that is the DNA and RNA. Now the DNA is a long polymer of deoxyribonucleotides and it was first identified by Frederick Mesher in 1869 within the nucleus and RNA is nothing but it is a long polymer of ribonucleotides. Now what is the difference between deoxyribonucleotides and ribonucleotides? I'll be just discussing in the subsequent slides. In this RNA is rarely found as a genetic material and it is generally uh, found in some uh, some viruses known as retroviruses so uh, all the higher uh, developed organisms contain the genetic material in the form of dna whereas some viruses typically known as retroviruses have genetic material as rna now moving to the next slide what are the major components of nucleic acids be it uh, RNA or DNA, the major components of the nucleic acids are nitrogenous base, pentose sugar and a phosphate group. So the, these are the three major components of the nucleic acids. These are the ma three major chemical components. Now coming to the first component that is the nitrogenous bases. Now the nitrogenous bases are again of two kinds, purines and pyrimidines. Now amongst the purines we have adenine and guanine. And among the pyrimidines, we have cytosine, thiamine, and uracil. We can see the structural details in the next slide. That is, we can see that adenine and guanine both are having two rings, whereas cytosine, thiamine, and uracil have single ring. Another point of difference is the DNA contains adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thiamine. Whereas RNA contains adenine, guanine, uracil, and cytosine. So thymine is replaced with uracil. Now coming to the pentose sugar. The pentose sugar. Um, is different in the case of deox um, uh, DNA and in the case of RNA. In the case of DNA, the pentose sugar, that is um, the uh, sugar consisting of five carbon atoms, one, two, three, four, five, five carbon atoms is um, um, the, D, uh, the sugar present in DNA is two deoxyribose and the sugar present in RNA is ribose. Here we can see it has a hydroxyl group at the second position whereas it, it does not have a hydroxyl uh, group and that is why it is a two uh, deoxyribose sugar. So the DNA contains deoxyribose sugar and RNA contains a ribose sugar. This is another point of difference between DNA and RNA apart from the nucleic, uh, the 
basis nitrogenous basis the sugars are also different in the case of dna and rna now moving to the next slide that is the nucleoside formation how is the nucleoside formed that is uh, the nitrogenous base plus pentose sugar is what is a nucleoside so the nitrogenous base when it is linked with the help of n glycosidic bond to a pentose sugar it can be a ribose sugar or it can be a deoxyribose sugar it forms uh, what is known as a nucleoside so when it uh, uh, when a ribose sugar is linked to adenine it forms adenosine and when it is linked to de uh, deoxyribose sugar is linked to adenine it is uh, known as deoxyadenosine so the naming is different here it is adenosine and it is deoxyadenosine similarly guanosine deoxyguanosine cytidine deoxycytidine like that the um, the naming also uh, differs with the respective um, uh, nitrogenous base attached to the uh, pentose sugar and the bond involved here is the n glycosidic bond so n glycosidic bond is involved in the um, uh, linkage between the nitrogenous base and the pentose sugar this forms a nucleoside now so the next stage now here is the nucleotide formation so the nucleoside plus phosphate group forms nucleotide so nucleoside contains uh, the sugar molecule and the nitrogenous base molecule and this together when it is attached to the phosphate group with the help of a phosphoester linkage with the help of a phosphoester linkage it forms a nucleotide so and then uh, the phosphate groups attached can be uh, the number of phosphate groups attached can be either one two or three when a single phosphate group is attached it is called as a monophosphate and when it is a uh, uh, two phosphate groups are attached it is called as a diphosphate when three phosphate groups are attached it is called as a triphosphate so here in this particular figure we can see that the um, deoxyribose sugar is uh, and a nitrogenous base is attached and it is attached to a single phosphate group so it forms a monophosphate so depending upon the number of phosphate groups attached to the nucleosides the naming of the nucleotides is done as follows which is adenosine pi dash monophosphate amp adenosine diphosphate or adenosine triphosphate so the nitrogenous base adenine has been uh, uh, adenine is a nitrogenous base and the sugar molecule is present and it is linked to a single phosphate here and this is linked to two phosphate groups over here and this is linked to three phosphate groups over here So moving to the next slide. So this is a figure of adenosine monophosphate, which is linked to a single phosphate group. And this is a figure of adenosine diphosphate. Let me just zoom it. So here we can see that it is attached to two phosphate groups. So the nitrogenous base adenine, we have a nitrogenous base adenine and we have two phosphate groups. And this is a triphosphate wherein it is attached to three phosphate groups, alpha, beta and gamma. Alpha is the very first uh, phosphate group attached to directly to the carboxyl uh, uh, carbon atom. So the next step is the formation of dinucleotide. So each of this nucleotide get, uh, gets attached to another nucleotide forming a dinucleotide. And the bond involved is a 3 prime, 5 prime phosphodiester linkage. Now why is this called as a 3 prime, 5 prime phosphodiester linkage? Here we can see that the uh, the uh, say suppose this is a 5 dash and say suppose this is a uh, first uh, um, first molecule of a uh, polynucleotide chain this is the first nitrogenous base and this is the first sugar here we can see that the pi prime end is linked with the phosphate group through a phosphoester linkage now the three prime hydroxyl group 
is at, is attached to the phosphate group and here the ch2 group uh, at the 5 uh, phi dash end of the second uh, sugar molecule is again linked with the phosphate group so there is one ester linkage and this is another ester linkage this is a di ester linkage and the number of the carbon atoms involved are the carbon atom present in the 3 prime end and the carbon atom present at the 5 prime end so that is why it forms a 3 prime 5 prime phospho di ester linkage and uh, due to this linkage the subsequent molecule gets attached so uh, th this uh, this three prime end can also be called as a tail because the further addition of the nucleotide molecule takes place uh, further addition of another nucleoside takes place at this end that is why this three prime hydroxyl group is also called as a tail and this is the uh, this is the origin this is the first po first point or the first originating point of the uh, first originating chain of the dna so this is how the dinucleotide is formed. Similarly, the subsequent addition of nucleotides keeps on taking place and ultimately it results in the formation of a complete polynucleotide. Many nucleotides join together, it forms a polynucleotide. When there are two nucleotides, it is called as a dinucleotide. So the formation of a polynucleotide when a number of nucleotides are joined together with the help of 3 prime 5 prime phosphodiester linkages it forms nothing but a polynucleotide so when the bases a t g c a t g c c t a c are present in a sequence the polynucleotide chain is represented as 5 prime the chain and the 3 prime because at this uh, the, uh, this terminus point that is at this end it has a hydroxyl group free to which the further addition of nucleosides can take place so this is a this is how a polynucleotide is formed uh, which is which forms the basis of the genetic material in in the sex, uh, subsequent sessions i'll be discussing about the um, uh, formation of dna the structure of dna how it is arranged and what are the factors which are responsible for the stability of the dna